Establishing secure connection. Please stand by. Please enter password to proceed. Welcome to the bombed bulletin. Live transmission initiated. Welcome, James. It's been a long time. And finally, here we are. tedious inevitability of an unloved season. We aim to please. What do you think you're doing? Keeping the British end up, sir. Hello everyone and welcome to Global James Bond Day 2019. My name is Benjamin Lind, I'm the editor of the Bond Bulletin. We did not get a teaser trailer today. Isn't that really a bummer? Uh, what we got is a teaser poster. Um, and, well, I don't know what you think. Let me know in the chat about the teaser poster. Um, here we have it. What are your thoughts? I've uh, read on Twitter a bit and on Facebook I collected some opinions and thoughts from everyone. Greetings from the Netherlands. Hello Netherlands, glad you can join in. It's pretty late here in Germany actually, it's 10 in the evening, uh, so we've got only two hours left of Global James Bond Day and actually I have to be in bed early, well as early as I can, because I need to go to Cologne tomorrow, I need to get about four in the morning, but well, oh here, yeah, great. Uh, yes, we can hear and see you quite and clearly. Wonderful. Then we can begin. So, the No Time to Die teaser poster is the only thing we got today, apart from that little 19 second video showing us uh, the translations of the title into pretty much every language. Hmm, and you think, uh, well, didn't they come up with something better for Global James Bond Day? Well, okay. We've got the teaser poster and here I collected some of the opinions from today. The poster is awesome. They're all from Twitter, by the way. Uh, just things I snapped up. Try to get a few positive and a few negatives. But well, let's be serious. The negatives are overwhelmingly present. Um, bold and daring. Maybe. Well, not my opinion, but okay. I like it, but it says more GQ ad than a Bond film. Yes, that's true. I think Daniel Craig has been featured in the GQ. I don't know. He looks elegant, sophisticated, sharp, and deadly. Well, okay. Still think Timothy Dalton looked more sharp and deadly, but okay. Uh, let's look at the, well, not-so-nice ones. 
poor choice of picture and expression, not a good image for a first poster. That was my immediate thought. Uh, I don't like Daniel Craig's expression on that photo, and I looked a long time <laughs> at this poster and tried to, well, find the meaning that they want to transport with it. And um, just judging by the background, I mean, there's this blue, it looks like Caribbean. When you look at that window behind Daniel Craig's shoulder, it is pro probably what we saw during the uh, set visit of uh, His Royal Highness Prince Charles, uh, where you had this big Palacio Velasquez in the background set at Pinewood Studios. So um, uh, this is probably where the photo was taken. Um, the poster clocks in with the other Craig uh, Bond films having Craig alone on the teaser poster, which is a bit uninspired. That's uh, actually true. Uh, Daniel Howe says, I don't think there is enough in the poster to tease. That is actually correct. Yeah, the only thing uh, we see is Daniel Craig and the title, a really big title. I think it's too big. And of course the date, April 2020. <laughs> Things we already know. Um, Klaus Gericke, hello Benny. Hi Klaus. Klaus actually doesn't live far away from me, so it's nice that the internet connects us all near and far. Uh, greetings from Birmingham in the UK. Sadarda Singh Sangera. Hello to you. Matt Tonic says, the poster must have taken at least 10 minutes to make. But it was rather five or something. Uh, people on Twitter were actually raving about it, saying I could have done a better job in Microsoft Paint or this has been done in Photoshop in under three minutes. Let's look at the next comment. Looks like a low cost DVD cover. Mm, yeah. Or does nobody even pretend to try and make a half decent movie poster anymore? Well, when you look at the old teaser posters and official posters of the Bond films um, and when you compare it to modern day movie posters there's not much painting going on not much um, that is really hand work so you do it with your hands you paint it by reference images or whatever this time is certainly gone but well yes there's no reason to have an uninspired poster. Look at this generic GQ monstrosity. Remember when film posters and teasers used to be imaginative? It's a Bond movie. People will see it. Where's the risk in being interesting? Good point there. So just shove it in the direction of Eon Productions that, well, we know what it's about and Bond attracts people around the globe. Otherwise, well, probably we wouldn't have Global James Bond Day now and we wouldn't be sitting here. Greetings from Hamburg, Jan. Hi, Jan. Nice to see you. Uh, some people I just met a couple of weeks ago when we had uh, the Honor Majesties event here in uh, my hometown, Brunswick, uh, that I'm streaming from. Um, so great that uh, all of you were joining in from everywhere. Hamburg, of course. Tomorrow Never Dies. City of uh, Tomorrow Never Dies. Bond uh, and Elia Carver. So, somebody's getting no connection. Let me just check. Um, well, my stream looks good. We might have a slight delay. That's what always happens. Uh, just reload the um, site if you have problems or anything. Um, nobody does it better than Bond. Celebrating the Global James Bond Day by watching both your live event and The Spy Who Loved Me right now. That's good because later you will get an information about The Spy Who Loved Me that has to do with Global James Bond Day. So stay tuned, stay with us. Uh, except when there's action on the screen, then look at Roger Moore and the Glo Lotus and Caroline Monroe, um, Barbara Buck. Ooh, um, I love that movie. Intro was great. The fan-made ones are better, particularly the Timothy Dalton stance version with the 60s vibe. Ryan McMahon. You've, uh, is that about the posters? Yeah, probably. Uh, like I said, older posters, a lot better. Last comment I have, more like no time to design a poster before James Bond Day. Uh, that's my favourite one, actually, um, from today. Yeah, it really seems like this was quickly cobbled together, um, which is sad in a way, because uh, I don't like to bash these things, really. Um, I mean, we all going to stream to the cinema anyway, 
and we're going to watch No Time to Die. There's no question about that. Everybody will. Even Bond fans who are not Bond fans yet will go to see Bond. But, well, we are the fans, and um, we immediately feel... I don't know if that's the right word, mistreated if they don't come up with a decent poster or a decent trailer or this and that. And, well, not having a teaser trailer for Global James Bond Day is sort of a missed opportunity, actually, I thought. And um, I was out all day with uh, the horses and uh, came back at six in the evening or something and then the poster dropped at midday and I thought oh what if there is a teaser trailer I have to build that in when I come back but uh, well I lost the feeling I don't think it will be ready and actually I checked the uh, website of the British Board of Classifications they have to review any new trailers and put their age restriction whatever on it and there was absolutely no listing of No Time to Die. Not even the film is listed. And there was no trailer greenlit, so I was pretty confident that we wouldn't have a teaser trailer today. So looking at the poster again, this is as far as we got for Global James Bond Day, but don't despair. I've got some surprises for you in uh, this live event because, yeah, well, I like to celebrate these things. And um, if... Uh, well, you, maybe you have seen the interview with the Bond experience that uh, I did and what I really want to do with my channel and with these live streams that will later not be available for all times. Um, but I want to deliver quality content and somebody on YouTube under this interview with David from the Bond experience uh, commented that uh, I put out better material than Eon does. That is, of course, a great comment, but uh, I just do what I love to do. I love to entertain well, you all that are in the chat. I love when you're having fun. Um, by the way, what is everybody having? So it, in, in, in the UK and in Germany, it's evening. It's late in the evening. Um, but in America, it's the afternoon. I think it's four in the afternoon or even one o'clock midday when you're on the uh, West Coast. So I'm having an Italian white wine to celebrate the filming in Matera, which is now over. But uh, what are you having? Anybody having martinis? I, I, I actually don't drink many martinis because uh, I only need, need two or something and then I can't stream anymore. So anything special you have done today for Global James Bond Day beside watching uh, a Bond film, obviously? I have to be honest, before I came on, I watched Spider-Man. So... I, I don't really put Bond films on a lot because I know them inside out and it's, it's well, for me it's not fun anymore. It's just, it's just uh, I work with them every day, so, mm, sorry, crucify me. Uh, Aston Martin released a couple of pictures today, so we now know all the four cars that will be appearing in No Time to Die. Of course, the DB5 that you saw in Matera. There is one surprise in it, uh, in, in the lineup of cars. We know the V8 Vantage will be on board. We saw that in the Norway scenes and, of course, in London. But surprisingly, there will also be a DBS Superleggera. I didn't know of that before today. So, that's new. And, of course, the Aston Martin Valhalla. Four Aston Martins in one film. Has there ever been a Bond film where there were more? Then one or two Astons? I don't think so. Let's have a look at the chat before we move on to the important dates of Bond history. Uh, looking forward to this stream. Last one was great. I was not a fan of the poster. Thank you very much. I hope you're watching the stream. This is the stream, not looking forward to it. Just actively participating. Gareth, thank you very much. Uh, here in Finland, I have a martini. Hello, Finland. Shaker not stirred and a tuxedo also. I could do my bad Sean Connery impression. Shaker not stirred, but I'm really bad at it. Watched Goldeneye and a BMW Clive Owen advert. Daniel Howes. Oh, yes. They are quite old, but they were quite fun, I remember. And at that time, I thought, ah, Clive Owen. That's good. Now, well, nah, he's, he's not the right, not the right choice. Until a few days ago, I had no idea there was an annual James Bond Day. Well, welcome to Global James Bond Day 2019. And uh, we will do the same thing next year. That's huge fun. I just wish that um, 
more would be done with James Bond Day, especially in the US, because uh, in uh, mainland Europe, we have a lot of events throughout the year, scattered throughout the year with Bond, uh, especially, of course, London, as it's the home of James Bond, but uh, also in Germany. Uh, and in Switzerland, we had so many events this year and there are still a few coming. It's always the fourth quarter that is very busy. So a um, lot of material for YouTube still coming this year. Right. Now I'm poster is too lazy. Yeah, it is. Uh, now I'm going to take you back to the 5th of October 1962, which was, of course, the premiere of the very first James Bond film, Dr. No. And we are now entering the timeline of the 5th of October. Actually, if you screen your books, all that you have, uh, and I just did the James Bond archives that you see right up there. Uh, this is my standard book that I look inside when I need some um, quick information. And it's really good because it's in chronological order. And I tried to find every mention of a 5th of October. And you would think, because it's Global James Bond Day, a lot always happened throughout the years with the 5th of October. Actually, it didn't. But I found some things that you might find interesting. So, obviously, Dr. No, here we see Sean Connery with Zena Marshall uh, at the premiere at the London Pavilion on the 5th of October 1962. But if we move on, actually we have to move back in time to the 5th of October 1919, where this man was born, Donald Pleasance one of the greatest actors of the UK, and he, of course, played legendary supervillain Ernst Stavro Blofeld in You Only Live Twice. Not only the best makeup in the franchise of a Bond villain, but such an iconic uh, portrayal of this character, of uh, Bond's arch nemesis, Blofeld. And actually, today, Donald Pleasance would have been a hundred years old, Sadly, he passed away in 1995 at the age of 75. Great actor. I love many films with, with Donald Pleasence, not just Bond. Uh, you have to check out other films that he did. Some very good war films are in there. Um, check out work, works by Donald Pleasence. Really great. Sounded a bit like Trump there. I'm terribly sorry. The Smile Loved Me. There we are. 5th of October 1976, this scene was filmed. Roger Moore, Barbara Buck and the Lotus Esprit dubbed Wet Nelly emerging from the sea in, where was it? Capriccioli, Sardinia. I actually have my notes here again. Yeah, well, it's eight pages of notes. That's the first time I needed it. <laughs> so, what do we have? I was at the Bond in Motion exhibition today. Really hoped your trailer would have been released today. My trailer? Oh, I do a lot of trailers. They, they should have something in there. But you, but you meant the teaser trailer. Bond in Motion. Great exhibition. You can see the Lotus Esprit in there. Really, really great. And uh, this scene was actually filmed on the 5th of October and you find it in the James Bond archives. Right at the back there is a chronological sequence of events with pictures. And the 5th of October 1976 is especially mentioned as the day where they filmed this scene. Why? I don't know why. I mean, it's just a scene. It's a good scene. It's a great scene. I love it with the fish and everything. Uh, it's fantastic. But why mention this? Why single it out? Maybe because it's the 5th of October. And here you have it. Uh, that's from the filming, actually. So, 5th of October, 1978. The Bond crew was in Venice filming the canal chase and uh, the gondola chase. You know, when the gondola turns into a sort of hovercraft and Roger Moore is going through St. Mark's Square. Hilarious. Great scene. I love it. Uh, to this day, Moonraker doesn't have that quite standing with many fans. It's quite low down in the rankings, but I love Moonraker. And don't forget... Roger Moore always said, you go to the cinema, you have two hours of fun and entertainment and humour, and that's what you always got with these films. So, uh, nowadays, they are a bit more, well, on the dramatic side, um, and uh, some of it is lost. So I hope that No Time to Die will revive a bit of that spirit that Roger Moore meant. Fun, 
entertainment and after two hours you know what you paid for uh, I think that's that's really really important so uh, they didn't film exactly on the 5th of October 1978 but the crew actually was on location at that time and they filmed until October 17 so it was quite a long shoot it was several weeks of shooting and then we move on to the 5th of October 1982 where the jungle chase of Octopussy was filmed in India with Roger Moore, some real-life elephants, and a fake tiger, as you probably remember. Octopussy, really a great film. What do you think of Octopussy? I mean, I I like it for the same reason a Moonraker. Uh, Octopussy was a bit more down-to-earth. It had this uh, Soviet threat, but uh, I thought it was very, very well made. A, a typical John Glenn action film um with all the john glenn elements i mean you, you, you've seen them in every bond film that he directed and also in other films recurring elements that he always used really love it so let's have a look at the chat uh what's going on here uh gareth smith i think the first official image of daniel in london in front of the aston martin v8 would have made a great teaser poster instead Yes, and actually a fan made a version of that. And a lot of people on Twitter commented and said, well, what time have we arrived in when the fan art is better than what the official design studios put out? So, well, wouldn't have happened in 1982. Octopussy teaser poster was great, if you've seen it. It had Roger Moore, several Roger Moores standing in line, uh, and they were hand-painted. So it was a really, really great thing. Uh, Damien Restori says, reading the making of the Living Daylights book, first draft originally had Bond fight Whittaker on Felix's boat. I wonder what the sequence would actually involve. Any ideas? Who? Uh, no idea, actually. Well, but I, I have to get that Living Daylights book. I have the uh, Honor Majesty's book, but, um, well, fighting on a boat, restricted space, uh, close quarter combat, uh, never know. Waiting for some action. No time to die. Can't wait to. Oh, yes. Action is coming. Don't worry. Moving on. <laughs> 5th, of, 5th of October 1984. The Bond crew was in San Francisco filming with uh, Roger Moore on Fisherman's Wharf. They also filmed exterior scenes of Stacy's country house and the exteriors of San Francisco City Hall. And they returned later to film City Hall on Fire. But uh, this was shot on uh, 5th of October on several dates. Actually, I don't have the, the dates where they shot. But from I think from the 2nd to the 7th of October, they did these exterior shots. Uh, in 1986, and this is an interesting image for everyone because it has rarely been seen. Um, it is an invitation to the press conference in the Vienna City Hall and it was issued by the mayor, Dr. Helmut Silk, and the press conference before filming started on the 6th of October was the day before, 5th of October 1986. And uh, this is one of the original invitations. And if I quickly translate to you it just gives you the date and the time it was 11 o'clock at uh, the celebratory hall of Vienna City Hall and it said the producers the director and the main cast of the new James Bond film The Living Daylights will be in attendance and actually the filming started a day later here is a picture of uh, the press conference there have been some pictures online of this, but uh, certainly this one you will not have seen before because it's from a private collection. So I'll, I'll leave you with that for a minute. Mariam Dabo seems a bit... Mm, not really wants to be there. Don't know. Uh, well, other people on the picture, of course, top, le top left is a uh, famous Bond producer, Cubby Broccoli. Uh, next to him, standing on the right, is the mayor, then mayor of uh, Vienna. Dr. Helmut Silk, and sitting uh, lower left is Jeroen Krabi. Actually, I recently learned how to pronounce his name. Thank God. My good friend Yannick from Switzerland taught me how to pronounce his name because it's, it's written Jeroen, and you think, oh, that's the way how to pronounce it. I'm trying to be really 
Belgian, French, but it's actually Jeroen. I didn't know that. And it's completely contradictory to what is written, how his name is written, but okay. Mariam Dabo sitting in the middle and Bond at that time, Timothy Dalton, obviously. Daniel House, I liked the money penny for the Dalton films. Definitely. Caroline Bliss. Lovely woman. Spoke to her a couple of times. Uh, had email contact with her to get her to some event. Uh, she's really, really a lovely lady. And I loved her portrayal of Money Penny. Loved it a lot. 5th of October, 1988. Also a John Glenn film, Licensed to Kill. And on the 5th of October, 1988, in Mexicali, they shot the death scene of Franz Sanchez and Bond escaping the final explosion of the tanker. So, this is pretty much all that I could find. After that, it stops. Uh, when you look at the production history of GoldenEye, Tomorrow Never Dies, or The World Is Not Enough, filming often started in January, February, and was finished sometime in the summer, and then the film got finalised. So, all the Bond films got often made later in the year. So, they started in June, July, or even in August and September, and then you have... October dates somewhere in the filming. So sadly, after 1988, there was nothing major happening on the 5th of October until, of course, James Bond Day was introduced during the 50th anniversary in 2012. Before we move on to something exciting that I heard this morning and I read this morning, maybe you've read it too, let's have a look. Luis La Justicia watched Goldfinger today. Good choice. The film that set the standards. If you don't like Dr. No, and if you don't like From Russia With Love, you certainly will like Goldfinger. It, it's one of these three. Many love From Russia With Love, and it is their defining Bond film, and many say the same about Goldfinger. Um, a couple of hours ago, I was trying to teach a parrot the first three uh, keynotes of Goldfinger and uh, once he learns it and once he can whistle it back I will record it and put it on YouTube <laughs> it's, it's fun sometimes I do these things uh, do you know when No Time to Die trailer gets released Robert Kelly no of course I don't no I really don't I have no idea um, I don't think it will be soon because, as I said before, I have not seen a classification on the British Board of Classifications. Um, so, nah, tomorrow? I don't think so. Um, it's um, or I, might, I might be wrong. I have no idea. I have always done this, like, uh, just wait for it. Don't spread any rumours. Just keep calm and wait for the teaser trailer. I did a couple of images of that. Keep calm and wait for official news or something like that. Um, and um, at some point during your day, it will be there. And you don't even realize. And you say, oh, there it is. And yeah, everybody's making a big fuss about it. And sometime, someday it will just be there. Right. Something interesting that came today. Bonagie, famed French champagne house, will release this lovely bottle and uh, cooler um, special 007 editions and they celebrate the 40-year partnership that the Champagne House Bollinger, Bollinger has with <laughs> the Bond franchise and it started with Moonraker the first time there is a bottle of Bollinger and uh, what you can see the bottle case here it is somehow reminiscent of uh, James Bond set design by legendary production designer Ken Adam. And the designer of this bottle case, Eric Berths, uh, wanted to actually reimagine the uh, Moonraker space shuttle that Ken Adam designed. And huh, I don't know, I don't see it, but it's a, it's a reimagination, of, of course. Um, the bottle inside is a 2007 Magnum bottle housed in a St. Louis crystal ice bucket so you actually yeah you get an ice bucket as well it has its price uh, this is a bond vintage par excellence really and bonagi is a very very good champagne 407 copies that's why it's a limited edition and uh, if you want to own it you have to invest around 4500 pounds 
don't know how much it is in uh, the currency where you live and uh, oh the music video for writings on the wall was released on 5th of october 2015 that's correct actually jan reuter thank you very much you are a very knowledgeable guy and skyfall was also released on 5th of october uh yeah that's that was the birth of of james bond uh day actually so true i should have put them in there but uh okay I try to stay away from trailer releases, poster releases and everything. Really when something was filmed on the 5th of October and something was actually done, not, not more than released. Ah, I should have put it in there. Thank you, Jan, for bringing that to our attention. Uh, now we have included it. Second bottle of Bollinger Champagne. They're not just putting out one limited edition. They're putting out two. Look at this beauty. Isn't that something? And at first I thought... What is that on the bottle? Is it a question mark? No, it's a 25. Because this bottle uh, and its case will be released in time for No Time to Die in 2020. Um, and what is in there? It's a Millicene 2011. And it's not just some uh, wine that they used to make the champagne. Uh, at 2011, if you know a bit about champagne, and some of us do. Uh, I don't regularly. I, I just read up on these things. Um, I don't drink a lot of champagne because in Germany, actually, we have sparkling wine that is drunk a lot more, it's a lot cheaper, than champagne. So, well, there you go. Um, and a 2011 vintage is not a good year for champagne. So what they did is they created this limited edition Bollinger Millesime from a Pinot Noir exclusively. So normally, I think, if I'm correct, they have several wines that they mix and create, form the champagne from that. But this is uh, completely from a Pinot Noir and not from several villages, but from the village, uh, Ayer in France, where Bollinger is housed since 1829. So this has never happened again. Uh, this has never happened before that they actually use just one wine, Pinot Noir, and coming from the same village where the Champagne house is based. So it's a special Champagne. It's a bit cheaper than the one you saw before. Um, 150 pounds. It will make you lighter if you are a Champagne drinker and you want to have that. Well, I won't get it. I, I didn't even get the other one that was uh, formed like a like a bullet. Nah, it's not my thing. I love Bollinger, by the way. Now, we, we had it on Pitt's Gloria. And that brings me to my next uh, topic. Uh, 50 years of On Her Majesty's Secret Service. We are in the anniversary year of uh, On Her Majesty's. And so many Bond fans travel to Switzerland at the end of May to celebrate the anniversary of this one film and we went up to Pitt's Gloria and of course there was a lot of Bollinger. There was a lot of music, camaraderie, good food and a splendid, splendid sunset. I have never seen that before. It was like in the film, just the helicopters were missing and everybody was dressed up. We were driven up in the gondola. Fantastic. So really, whenever there is a Bond celebration near you, you have to go. You have to meet the people, the fans and everyone. It's such a great experience. And the year is almost over. So the 50th anniversary celebrations of Honor Majesties will die down. But before they do, I've put together a behind the scenes video of Honor Majesty's Secret Service, which I hope will be transmitted well and all of you can see and hear it. So... It's six and a half minutes long, but uh, grab a martini and just enjoy. Not me talking for six and a half minutes because I wanted to surprise you with something. So uh, please enjoy because it's Global James Bond Day. I put this together for you. So I'm going to switch out and switch back on again once the film is over. See you in a couple of minutes.
and back I am. <laughs> Wasn't that something? Um, Yannick Zenhäuser actually did the music for that piece. Um, he did uh, the music for my films from Shiltorn, Pitts Gloria, when we were there for the 50th anniversary. Uh, so that I had a soundtrack for my videos and I just used them again now. Um, it's really close to John Barry and he really takes a lot of time um, to think of compositions. When he sees video material, he gives that a lot of thought. Um, he actually did not do Tom Baldick's trailer for the event at Shiltorn, that was another musician. Um, and I really love Yannick's work, have done for years. Uh, sadly, he's not here today, but probably he has to work tomorrow because he works uh, in the radio, his local radio station. And um, yeah, Matt Tonic, I think I shared a few words with you at Honor Majesty's 50. I don't know, you were a podcaster back then. Yeah. Um, ah, yeah, I now, now I remember. Um, I see so many faces, probably I didn't recognize you. I spoke to so many people on and off camera, so please forgive me if if I don't remember your face. Um, it happens to me a lot. One day I will, it will hopefully get, hopefully get better. Um, but uh, if, if you've been on Shiltorn, you've seen Cue the Music, that's why I have uh, this picture here. And I wanted to shift your attention to a few shows that Cue the Music will still be putting on this year. Who of you, uh, who of you have seen uh, Cue the Music live somewhere in the UK or on Pitts Gloria or anything else? With fabulous singer uh, Carrie Schultz, met her in person on uh, Pitts Gloria, did a short interview with her. Lovely woman. Uh, band leader Warren Ringham. Absolute fantastic person. And what he put together with uh, Cue the Music as a tribute band. I mean, they have a live show that, in the view of many, even surpasses the original Bond songs. So if you've never seen them in concert, this is your chance because they have a few... Uh, dates left in 2019 that I want to shift your attention to in a moment. Nobody does it better than Bond says, Cue the Music Show gave me their music CD and a DVD with videos of the songs, tracks because I helped them with some promoting pictures they have took two years ago. Uh, Derek Lyons. Hi Derek! Thanks for joining my good friend Derek Lyons. So now we actually have somebody who was in four Bond films in the chat. That is something for Global James Bond Day, my friends. Uh, Derek is a wonderful guy and he says, Great show and loved my time with you in Brunswick. The poster of No Time to Die is horrid. Thank you, Derek. Great minds think alike. And um, probably next year, Derek and I will have some surprises for you. Something that might happen in London. I will notify you in time. And of course, uh, you will see everything here on my channel. Um, so, the dates. Uh, Cue the Music will be in Manchester on the 12th of October, 19th of October, in Port Talbot in Wales, with Bond girl Madeline Smith, who was in the opening sequence of Live and Let Die, and she's chaperoning for Cue the Music live on stage. On the 2nd of November 2019, they will be in Swindon with Caroline Bliss. Hey, Money Penny from the Dalton films. If you want to meet her and see Cue the Music live, that is your chance. Everybody who loves money penny of the Dalton films. I certainly would go, but I'm <gasps> I'm somewhere else on the, on the, at that date. 8th of November, Crawley with Caroline Bliss. Again, another chance to see Money Penny. And on the 24th of November in Clacton on Sea, again with Madeline Smith, Bond Girl, and Live and Let Die. If you want to know more about Cue the Music, what they do, and if you want to hear some snippets, go to their official website, cue the music uh, show dot com slash see the show and on that website you can also book tech tickets for these shows for these dates that i just mentioned you really really have to see them uh, this is the most authentic and hardest working tribute band that you will ever see um, and they've been touring the uk since march this year they've been to the formula e in uh, monte carlo uh, and their legendary concert on Shiltorn Pits Gloria in 2,970 meters height. 
at the anniversary of On Her Majesty's Secret Service. It doesn't get any better than this. But believe me, if you go to one of the live shows, you will not, you will really not forget that. And I certainly won't forget it. I've, I've seen it on Showtime Pits Gloria. Fabulous. Absolutely. So go get tickets. CQ the music live. Time for a game. Who's up for a game? Let me check the chat first and my notes. Where am I? Oh, I'm here. Oh, the game. The game. You will love that. Let me see what we have. Um, is anyone from UK James Bond Get Together Club? What? That's a funny name. Great to see my dear friend Peter Hunt on the black and white footage. Yes, actually not a lot of black and white footage uh, of Peter Hunt moving images were released. And there's, there's really not, not a lot. Um, Derek, I am with Warren soon at a Bond event. See, Bond events happening all of the time, all over the world. Oh, Danny Morgenstern is online. Hi, Benji. I was hoping it runs in German. That already is a bad English translation. Uh, Danny Morgenstern is, of course, the author of uh, the 007 XXS book series. So he writes a small book for every film. Uh, and he recently released Honor Majesty's Secret Service. And we did this event together here, Mission Bond. You can see the videos on my channel. There is City Tour with... Terry Lyons and Ter Terence Mountain, uh, the stage talk, which runs about an hour with Derek and Terence and Brigitte Miller, Dr. Fogel from Spectre. And Danny's books are always right up there in my whole corner. And you see, he's written so many books. So the colored one there, you see there with a bit of purple and orange, that is the new uh, Honor Majesty's Secret Service, which of course I've already read. It's just, what, 320 pages, Danny? Danny is a great friend. Uh, dance instructor a really really great one so um, for my film that i did a couple of years ago i actually had to do a dance sequence and he imagined it he came up with it within a couple of minutes and then it took three hours to teach me how to do it because i'm a really bad dancer actually i'm not a dancer at all so thank you for joining in <laughs> derek terence mountain really likes you and thinks you are the what the biz oh yes doing my best here uh what else do we have hi derek i would love an autograph sometime i'm a huge fan or if you could say hello to me well derek there you go right uh moving on we have another uh anniversary coming on but before we do that we play a game of where is fekesh now what is that First of all, clever Bond fans and probably Danny and Jan and everybody will realize that Fekesh is written wrong. Well, my mistake, sorry, but uh, you do these videos, stings and everything, and yeah, then you realize you missed a K because it's sort of Egyptian and they have two Ks in the name. So what is Where is Fekesh? I will explain to you in a moment, but first of all, here's the game sting that <laughs> I devised, of course, together with Yannick, who does the music for pretty much everything. So here we go. Where is Fekesh? So uh, a fun thing. The game rules are you will have a snippet of a scene from a Bond film. And it might be tiny. It might be something uh, that doesn't make the scene obvious at first. So you have to identify the scene and the film it is from. And it's called Where is Fekesh? Because Fekesh is hiding and taking the picture. <laughs> Obviously not because the cameraman took the picture, but otherwise I couldn't have called it Where is Fekesh? Could I? Uh, post your answer in the chat if you know what scene and what film this is from or if you have any other additional information. This is probably going to be fun. We start with something uh, easy. So this is the first snippet of the scene. Please tell me, where is Fekesh? I'll give you a couple of seconds because there is a delay anyway and I have a rare moment to look at the chat. If you know where Fekesh is, put your answer in the chat. Tell me the film, tell me the scene, or the location. Name of the location would be good here. What do you think? Where is he? Dear old Fekesh. 
Hmm. Matt Tonic says Las Vegas. Well, Las Vegas. No, nah, I don't know. No, no, it's not Las Vegas. No. But it, it, you are in warm waters. Uh, it's, it's close. So I need the, the scene and I need the film. Kirk Douglas's villa? I don't know. Was it? That's not exactly the name of the film. <laughs> Bernd. <laughs> Hi, by the way. Thanks for, for tuning in. Really? Nobody? Nobody knows what that is from? Look at the round shape. Everybody has seen that. Here. Here we go. Big chap. Shady Trees Villa. Diamonds are forever. Underneath, Matonic, Elrod House, Palm Springs. Both got it. That's what it is. It's Elrod House and Sean Connery just walking right into it. In Diamonds Are Forever. Well done. Next one. Hmm, next one is a bit tricky. This is your snippet. So I need the scene and the film. What do we have? We have, yeah, just three letters actually. Four, you can barely read them. They probably spell shell. Good for Sean Connery to pronounce, shell. What film is it and what scene is it from? It's an older film. Where is Fekesh? I want to know where Fekesh is. Danny, Palm Springs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Done. It's, that's the delay, so you're probably all staring at it and thinking, oh, what the hell? Where is it? Where is Fekesh? That's exactly what I wanted. I'll give you a hint. It is one of the early Bond films. Oh, the chat has gone quiet. Is that too difficult? And you're, you're pulling up your Bond films. Bond picks Goldfinger on the road to Forker Pass. No. Sadly, no. Danny Mongstan, DN. Well, he has learned the English abbreviations. Dr. No. That's correct, but it was not the scene. Danny, you forgot the scene. Big chap. Hi. Hi, big chap. Jamaica Airport, Dr. No. There you go. Correct. Bond in the phone booth. Jamaica Airport, Dr. No, and in the background you see the limousine and his driver, who was, of course, not such a nice guy, and Shell in the background. Big chap, you've won that round of Where is Fekish? Danny, you have to give me the scene as well, not just write Dr. No. Oh. Derek, off now, Benjamin, loved this. Read my PM on Facebook, your friend Derek. Thank you, Derek, for joining in. I will read it later. I have to get up really early, four o'clock in the morning, but I will read it. By the way, send my email to what you asked me to do. Just waiting for a reply. Bye-bye, thank you very much for joining in. Next round, where is Fekesh? Ooh, now it gets a bit, hmm, dancer on the dance floor. Ooh, where is Fekesh? What scene and what film is this ha it's not getting easier people that's really not getting easier the next one is really hard if you thought this one is hard the next one is really hard so anybody any ideas look closely well-dressed people could have been the 70s could be the 60s you never know could be the 80s but there is a dancer right in the middle entertaining people it's a big scene, actually. Uh, you can uh, see it from the size of the people sitting alongside the, the stage. What film could it be? Band Holida, Thunderball, good. I need the scene. Or the location. Name of the location. Thunderball is correct. Now I just need somebody. Big chap, come on. Danny. You should know. Heavy. Band. Kiss Kiss Bang Bang Club. The Kiss Kiss Club. Exactly. Thunderball. The Kiss Kiss Club here. Oh, glorious set design. Wonderful. I hope we see something like that in in No Time to Die. So uh, They did something with lights uh, in Matera. So they filmed in the evening and they had uh, a very, very peculiar and interesting lighting. So I hope something like this will find its way back to the Bond films because, uh, well, I know 
how difficult it is to shoot at night, uh, to shoot night scenes. Um, and, well, Thunderball delivered with a Caribbean setting. Wonderful. Actually, you could see Sean Connery right, right down there, almost left of the middle. Okay. The last one. I think it's the last one. I don't know how many there are. Might be a bit tricky. Oh, yes. That's the tricky one. Ooh, that's the tricky one. You really have to look closely. What do you think? Where is Fekesh? I need the film and the scene. Fekesh is a very good photographer, actually. As a, he's been in every Bond film and he's photographed this for you. Just so that we can make a silly game out of it, trying to pass time until Global James Bond Day comes to an end. But, well, ooh, I like it. And I like that you like it. Somebody wrote a... Uh, 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 Amazing stream or something. Really like that. I like how the how the chat goes quiet. Danny, SF, Skyfall? No, definitely not. Matt Tonic, Honor Majesties. Matt, well, it's Honor Majesties, but it's not the ice rink. No, it is not. It is not the ice rink. Nope. But you can see it's on Her Majesty's, or then it has a connection with a skiing bond, because the post is in the middle. Uh, I don't know if you can see it properly. Maybe if you have it on full screen. I have it on full screen. They are, are skiing shoes. So, um, Daniel Howes, on Her Majesty's, crane scene lifting up the photocopier. So, actually, what you mean is it's the building site where the crane is. That is correct. It's the Draco construction site in Bern. And these posters were just lined on the side there. And you have the crane that lifts up the photocopier. So, uh, Daniel Howes, you got it. Draco construction. Actually, what you are seeing in that scene in Honor Majesty's, I don't know if many, many of you know that. Uh, what was actually constructed there, because this was an actual construction site. <laughs> They built the new Bern Central Station there, uh, where you arrive today by train, I think. And it's not Central Station, I think. It is a train station. I don't know. I forgot. I was there, but I really forgot. It's a big glass and steel building. Big chap, my screen is too small. Well, you got one correct. So everybody got one. I mean, I don't want to make it too easy. I've got a lot of more games for other uh, uh, Skypes, for other live things, uh, and some of them are really, really hard. I tested them on experts, and they said, wow, this is really, really hard. One of them is called Blofeld's Aquarium. That is the hardest Bond game you ever play. For forget all of the trivia games that you ever played, all the quizzes. Blofeld's Aquarium oh, will blow you right out of... Well, the aquarium. So, glad you liked that. There is a possibility you're going to get a Christmas gift from Finland this year, Benjamin. Really? A Christmas gift from Finland? Hmm. I'm always open for presents. Please, send me everything you want. There is a YouTuber I know from... Oh, where is she, where is she from? She's from Norway. She always gets German candy and American candy and she tests that and does vlogs about it. Great stuff. Uh, right. The second anniversary for this year is License to Kill, which turns 30. Great film by John Glenn. A great, great action thriller. A bit ahead of its time with uh, the brutality of it all. But uh, a, a splendid Timothy Dalton performance. I love License to Kill. It is a very well constructed film by John Glenn and his team. Um, and um, what are your opinions on License to Kill? I mean, many people have it in high regard, I know, not just the film, also the song and the, uh, uh, the portrayal of Bond by Timothy Dalton, the, the, the cast. Um, Robert Davi was a great villain. Um, and I always have a problem with villains who are not threatening they have to be threatening when i must have the feeling if i stand opposite that person he could really harm me or harm people i know or 
the general public. Uh, and uh, with some recent Bond villains, like, for example, Dominic Green, I did not have that feeling at all. He didn't seem menacing at all. He, he seemed like a, a little bit grown-up schoolboy who has a, a sort of a plan to just destabilize the country, but it all, well, I don't know. It was a bit boring, actually. But uh, Franz Sanchez was quite a vicious character, not just uh, his persona on screen, his appearance, but his character. He was He was menacing. He was a real pain in the backside. I don't want to use any floral language here. So, um, Big Chap says, Love License to Kill, Truck Chase is incredible. That is true. What we see here, the exploding tanker, I mean, they filmed that for real. Before they did Die Another Day, they never had so many explosions and so big explosions on location. And they used a big stretch of desert in Mexico to film that. And if you go to um, the Bond Bulletin, to my website, thebondbulletin.com, and you go to the interactive James Bond Atlas, you can actually select the filming locations of License to Kill and you can see where uh, the tank chase was filmed. Uh, three separate locations, probably more, but three uh, I immediately think of. It's uh, where one of the tankers goes on two wheels, being shot through with a missile, and also where the plane later loses its wings. They are very close together. And this was hard to find. It's um, because I've never been there. It's a mix of satellite imagery and uh, actual reference photos where you look for a little house in the back of the shot and that house still has to be there if it's not well you have a problem looking at it uh what are we still have the big chat the flaming hand on devil's highway yes that was a spooky moment but actually it's not in the film i think it was just this making making off picture nobody does it better than bomb says uh very brutal but i love the thing that q was much of the time out in the field that's true it is something that has come back uh, Inspector, for example, Q was out in the field assisting Bond. Um, I thought in License to Kill he was a bit too old, but this was the comedy element. This was the, the humour that License to Kill needed. You needed this interaction between a very hard Bond, played by Timothy Dalton, and this this soft and loving and and uh, like uncle figure or grandfather figure of Q assisting him on location in Isthmus, <laughs> really really great. And this smoothed over the brutality of the film, but it was cut in in a lot of countries. Uh, a lot of scenes were cut, and I think the Ultimate Edition DVD has the original uh, version that was screened in the in the cinema. So, uh, Daniel Howes, I always picture Dalton when I read the books. That's an interesting thought. Uh, it's not the first time I hear that. Um, I should probably do that as well. I, but I hate to read. That's my problem. I love to watch, but I hate to read. Um, the reason why I speak to you about the 30th anniversary of License to Kill is because on the 3rd of November, the German James Bond Club will have an event in Frankfurt. And if anybody of you has the chance to join, I know the German fans will probably be there. Um, we will be in the German Film Museum together with, drumroll, the man himself, no, not Timothy Dalton, but John Glenn, joined by his wife Janine, who was Barbara Broccoli's, uh, uh, Cubby Broccoli's secretary. That's how they met, John and Janine. Lovely couple. I love John Glenn. Met him again in uh, Shilton, Pitts Gloria, uh, during the Honor Majesty Secret Service celebrations. And he actually was here in my hometown a couple of years back for a film festival. Lovely interaction with the fans. And that's why I said, well, let's get him for... 30th anniversary of License to Kill and he is so thrilled to be in Frankfurt with us on location a city that already has a Bond connection because Frankfurt Airport was used in Diamonds Are Forever yes so uh, this is the the event that we have I've got the poster for you um, it's gonna be a big day so we have the whole afternoon together with John in the German Film Museum and uh, 
I can't tell you how he's going to get there because this is a very, very special part of the day that I will film for you and later put it on YouTube. A classic car will be involved. Uh, it, it's going to be fantastic. And um, the talk in the evening uh, will be conducted by the museum director of the German Film Museum, Ellen Harrington. You see her right here. Um, and she has previously worked for the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts and Sciences because they also have their own museum. And she was the curator of that same museum. So that is already high class. John will be thrilled. Uh, he has a TV interview scheduled as well because uh, once there is a Bond director in town or in, in Germany in general, uh, well, television keeps knocking on the door and that's a good thing because uh, it's good publicity for the James Bond Club Germany and good publicity for Bond in general because well it's a whole Bond themed day and we also have a surprise for John a musical surprise for Bond uh, for John now I call him Bond already but John is a lovely lovely person love John Glenn if you have the chance to come to Frankfurt do it uh, I think there are still tickets left or well what does it say you can register through our website james minus bond minus club dot de all uh, right what do we have in the in the chat badre bally i wish they would retcon blofeld from specter like either make him a fake or his reason for going evil was a lie to mentally torture bond some more yeah well they got the rights to the name Blofeld so they should do something with it um, but I think it is not the right time it has not been the right time inspector to bring Blofeld back um, for me it was a not believable plot line plot element I didn't like Blofeld coming back sorry have to be open about it I didn't love uh, that he was played by Christoph Waltz because I thought Christoph Waltz was just in a character role named Blofeld and actually playing himself Christoph Waltz like he does in many films um, he is a good actor uh, no doubt about that but no bringing Blofeld back it didn't work for me sorry uh, and I know he's going to be in the in the next film but okay well let's wait and see um, at this event, 30 Years of License to Kill with John Glenn, uh, we will be showing some tribute trailers and a new tribute trailer that I did. And I want to show you a little snippet of it, a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of it, just a tiny bit, because uh, it is really something I um, worked a long time on. And again, Yannick did the music for it and we want to premiere it in the cinema so that's why I just show you a little snippet of it but it, it seems you know and maybe you like it and because it's Global James Bond Day I just keep keep flushing it out there so, but if you want to see the full thing uh, after the event I will upload that trailer or I will film it when it is on stage um, but I'm pretty sure I will upload the full trailer for you but here is a little snippet I'm going to be back in just a second, maybe 30 seconds. I don't know how long it is. See you in a In my business, you prepare for the unexpected. And what business is that? I help people with problems. Problem solver. <laughs> well, as I said, just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. Last but not least, well, it's we've, we've gone over an hour now. Um, and I will go back into your questions just in a moment. The second event I'm really looking forward to, and actually these two are in the same month. So John Glenn will be on the 3rd of November. And the James Bond Club Switzerland will have an evening with Lynn Holly Johnson on the 23rd of November. Something I'm really looking forward to because I've been wanting to meet Lynn Holly Johnson for years. And uh, this time she said yes to coming to Switzerland and uh, the Swiss being experts in setting up events. 
um, with a lot of style and a lot of really great company and they are so friendly the Swiss it's it's amazing um, at a very very nice hotel near Zurich so I will be staying in in Zurich city and uh, this hotel where this is there is actually a very romantic ice rink right in front of it as you have in November when you are a, a premium hotel and uh, well I've got my interview slot with Lynn Holly Johnson so there will be something here on this channel I'm uh, really looking forward to it because I have some surprises for her uh, so that I don't have the normal regular interview like a uh, question answer thing uh, I have something in mind and maybe she plays along if she doesn't well I'm, I'm still gonna be on location and it's gonna be really really fantastic uh, probably not dressing up too much because it's really really gonna be cold in November uh, and the day before the event I will be visiting a special Bond fan and friend who was also on Pitts Gloria for the anniversary of Honor Majesty's Secret Service and he has one of the biggest collections Bond collections in Europe so I will be launching my new series the Bond Bulletin always rings twice if that rings a bell you're a naughty person <laughs> um, yeah, so I will be visiting him. His name is Michael Hackel and his website is 007collector.com. And uh, I'm really looking forward to it because he has a, a lot of pieces in um, his collection that also have to do with me. And it will be fun to stumble over them. Uh, I know he's got glass vitrines of, of uh, so many things. And he's such a great guy to talk to. So the Bond Bulletin always rings twice. New series starting in... November. Well, this will be then the end of a very, very, very great Bond year. Uh, now it's just October, but uh, I don't know what will happen in December. We'll probably follow the production of No Time to Die a bit more. By that time, we'll probably have a teaser trailer, so fingers crossed. Um, License to Kill should be more widely celebrated in this its 30th anniversary it is up there as one of the best and original Bond movies that is actually true uh, I haven't seen anything else being celebrated with License to Kill this year it was all Honor Majesty's Secret Service stuff um, but uh, you're absolutely right License to Kill should have had more exposure as a 30th anniversary film because the 50th anniversary is long long ahead in the future don't know if well, I'm alive but, uh, yes well Great live stream, Benjamin. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, right. We are at the end. But before you go, before I send you in the night, into the night, don't leave yet. I have a last video for you to send you off. I just want to thank all my subscribers, everybody who tuned in tonight for Global James Bond Day 2019. Um, yes. And I made a tribute video a couple of years ago. It's actually not that old. Um, but these are a couple of minutes for your James Bond day to end with action and one of the songs that always is voted as the best Bond song ever so please enjoy the Bond Bulletin signing off have a great time see you around on the internet on Facebook and wherever you can write to me anytime ask your questions so have a great night thank you for being part of Global James Bond day 2019 Bye bye.
But I bet ya, this will bring him to his knees To live and let die to do it well You got to keep me on a fella Ever-changing world in which we live in makes you. 